Hello everyone, I'm Jonette Benkovic, and welcome to this special live simulcast of Women of Grace. What a pleasure to be with you via EWTN television, EWTN radio affiliates, satellite radio, shortwave radio, and internet. Indeed, EWTN is everywhere. Do you have a child giving you fits about attending Mass? A spouse who argues with you about God? A neighbor who is always trying to persuade you away from Catholicism? If so, then today's program, Day-to-Day -day Evangelization, How to Speak the Truth in Love, is for you. Chris Stewart and Tony Brandt of Casting Nets Ministry are with us, and they are going to tell us how we can be evangelizers right where we are in the nitty-gritty ground zero of our everyday life. Their tips and tactics are sure to inspire and encourage you. Listen up. It's going to be a power-packed program. We are women of grace from the throne of Let's face it, we all have friends and relatives who have fallen away from the faith, and we have all been approached by well-meaning yet overbearing individuals who want to pull us out of the Catholic pew. Then there are those troubling moments when our child announces that he or she is no longer going to go to Mass, believes in God, or has accepted the secular perspective on any number of issues. Suddenly. We are faced with ground zero evangelization. What we say and what we do may make all the difference. So then, what do we say and what do we do? Here to answer these questions for us are Chris Stewart and Tony Brandt of Casting Nets Ministry. Let's welcome Tony and Chris. Tony, Chris, welcome to Women of Grace. I'm so happy to have you here. Well, we're thank honored you for to be here. You. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And I want to thank you for the great gift that you are to the church, for the work that you're doing in the church, helping people to come into a deeper understanding of our faith, uh, in a very deep relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, and getting people stirred up about this new evangelization. And I guess we should really start there. You know, we hear this term, new evangelization, What's so new about the new evangelization, and why are you guys so excited about it? Tony? Well, the, the new evangelization, really, when we look at it from a perspective of the church, you know, it's, it's actually ancient. Um, evangelization has been ancient. It's been a part of the church. It's, it's the reason for the church. Uh, the new evangelization really hits us at home and, and asks us to get out of our shells, uh, to, to evangelize the people around us and even the people in our own pews. And, yeah. and you and I ourselves are continually going through that conversion, so we need that evangelization as well. I also think that it's a, it's a really important detail to see that in our modern day, in our, in our current age, that we have things like EWTN and the internet and Facebook and Twitter and all these things that we need to use the new tools that are available to us to engage other people in the faith and, and present the gospel in a new way. Yeah, when you get out there and, and you're sharing, and I mean, you guys are, these these two men are like evangelizers on the road. They remind me of like contemporary St. Paul's because <laughs> I mean, truly indeed, you travel one part of the country to the other part of the country and you're always somewhere doing something for the church, building it up. Uh, when you get out there and you start talking about the new evangelization, are people excited about it? What, what is the general perspective that you see, Chris? Yes and no. Uh, I think there's something about evangelization for Catholics that even if they've been raised in the faith, um, we are fearful. Uh, and whether that fearfulness is from, you know, their own inconsistencies, their own, uh, what they perceive as a lack of skill for sharing their faith, their own, you know, we, we're, we've been raised in this environment that you have to be tolerant of everyone's views. And so to share something about your faith then means that uh, you're intolerant of that person's views. And so there's a lot of fears out there. Mm -hmm. um, but yet there's a lot of joy in the act of evangelization. And once they get the taste of that, it, it sets them on fire. And to me, you know, to add to what Tony had said about the new evangelization, that's kind of the beauty of, I think, what John Paul brought to the table was that there was this outward focus, but at the same time, there's always this inward focus that we have to be evangelized. The evangelizer has to be evangelized constantly on a daily basis. And the more we come to interact with our Lord, the more we come to know that joy, that peace, that mercy, we're going to want to share it. Yeah. And 
we actually, the more we know that peace, joy, and mercy, usually the better we get at sharing it because mm -hmm. it's more authentic. And so when people come to experience that, it catches fire. So there is a lot of excitement. If we can get them past that, if we can get them moving to share their faith, it does wonders for their own lives and then those around them. Yeah, I'm going all the way back to Pope Paul the sixth encyclical, you know, on evangelization in the modern world. I, I love that encyclical. You know, it, it's one of my faves. Christy Fidelis Leach, she's another one of them, uh -huh. but uh, there's many that, that I really love. But that one really made a big impression on me because when I began to sense that the Lord was calling me to be an evangelist, you know, it was quite astonishing, frankly. But I was very excited about it interiorly mm -hmm. because he does that, you know, he gives you the desire. and. He puts that in you. And that gave me some great insight. And in there, in that particular encyclical, he talks about evangelizing like to like. And by that, he means that, you know, we, we've got to give the faith to people who are just like ourselves where we are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get these notions that we have to go to far flung places and, you know, we've got to do all kinds of very peculiar things. And I think that this is why people get nervous about it. Like, we don't have to stand on a soapbox. You don't have to do television or radio programming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you have to evangelize where you are and you have to look at every single sphere of influence in your life and you know every place you end up during the course of the day whether it's the grocery store or the children's school or even the ballpark or wherever you might end up as your mission field of evangelization and God wants us to bring people to him by placing us there right. so you know how do you communicate that and help people to get over that hump and say well wait you know you are a missionary but you're a missionary right where you are what do you do well, I really think that uh, a lot of times people think I'm going to go change the world, but the, the world that they need to change is the world that they're in, the world that, that, that surrounds them, mm -hmm. their everyday life. Uh, it's not necessarily, like you said, getting up and, and going to some mission country, but it's all the people. Who, who are the people in your neighborhood? Who are the people that are across the street or at work that, that still need to hear the gospel message and you know that it's a conversation that you want to build? The other thing is that evangelization is, is really about building relationships. Mm -hmm. And it's not about just having just the right apologetics phrase or, or the scripture quote that, that's gonna match their argument. It's, it's building the relationship. And we're not gonna build a relationship uh, very easily uh, over a long distance or a long period, you know, over a short period of time. It's the short distance over a long period of time with our friends, our family, our neighbors, our coworkers. Those are the people that we have that opportunity to build that relationship with and, and show them the gospel through our lives, but then looking for those opportunities to engage in a conversation that's meaningful, um, that spirit of invitation to invite them to mass or invite them to a church event. Those kind of things happen not with the, the foreign missions, but with the people that we have around us. Yeah, you know, I, I'm thinking about uh, your website, which is beautiful, and I want to recommend that you all get out there. It's castingnetsonline.net. I know that you're seeing it in the name keys of our guest today, but I just want to mention it again. It's castingnetsonline.net. You're going to find that there's all kinds of, of fabulous opportunities for you in your parishes, in your dioceses, for catechetical uh, conferences, etc., where Tony and Chris will come and they'll present They've got all kinds of beautiful DVDs available for you. They're sitting right here on our table. Uh, and, and you can get a taste of, of the various wide variety of topics that they present on. And uh, when I went out there, what, what caught my attention based on what you're saying there, Tony, is this beautiful witness that's right on the, the homepage that starts out. And I think it's your witness, Chris, with, with a friend. Uh, that, that you were evangelizing over a period of time, yeah. right? And, and it, it, was, it was the short distance over the long haul right. that made the difference. And then, wow, when this guy fell, he fell like a ton of bricks in a certain sense. Right. Why don't you share that with our, our viewers and listeners today? Well, I think, uh, you know, what Tony is mentioning about um, that relationship and, and I, even what you said about like to like, mm -hmm. I think is, is just a huge point is the fact that God is gonna bring, and this is where I think we can have a confidence when we're gonna go share the, the faith, that God is gonna bring the people that perhaps only we can reach. There's people that Tony uh, really reaches, young, young people who Tony reaches that I necessarily wouldn't get to. Mm -hmm. uh, but God brings them to him. And perhaps there's somebody else that brought God brings to me in my doorstep and I can reach them. Um, and I think that like to like, God can set up. And I think mm -hmm. we also, as you kind of said in your opening, we sometimes need to get messy. We sometimes need to be what perhaps they need us to be in that moment. St. Paul said that, right? Mm -hmm. To be all things to all men so that a few may be saved. Um, 
and yet at the same time, I, we have a, a coworker that he would come in and he would like ask me questions about, you know, some sports over the weekend, some football game, and he asked me questions. I know. Here's what's weird. I know this guy doesn't like sports at all. He's not a sports guy at all. And he would be, I'm like, why are you asking me about this? But I'd tell him, I said, this happened, and I, this was really neat. I'd tell him all these things. Well, then I'd hear later on, once class began, I'd hear him start talking about this in class. And I thought, what a beautiful thing. He just is wanting to make those connections so he can get into that door with those young men, those young women, so that uh, so he can be all things to all men, so he can be like unto like. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's crucial. And God is going to, we can have a confidence that, yes, we need to keep an eye out for who else we can share, but we can also have a confidence that God is going to bring those people to us. Yeah. You know, in that grocery store, at that restaurant, at work, that God is going to bring, and he's brought them to us for a reason, that perhaps we are that instrument and maybe the only instrument so we have to be open to those moments and, and thank God for those moments. Yeah. Uh, and it's humbling as well. You know, and here's a challenge. And, you know, I, this is a challenge to be issued to ourselves every single day and a challenge to issue each to each other every day. And so I'm going to issue it to all of you watching and listening today. And that is that, you know, in the morning we've got to wake up and, and we've got to calibrate our sight just a little bit differently. The lens that we've got to look through is not what am I going to do today, but it's got to be what is God going to do today? And we've got to look at every person that crosses our path as somebody that God wants us to evangelize, either through word, right, or through witness. But this getting down into the mess of it is where we've got to go. It's, it's being with them, walking their journey with them, and being in the midst of the situations that are going on in their lives so that we can be that light in their lives. Yeah. I think uh, when you say that about that new eyes, I think of uh, Father Jacques Philippe uh, has his book, uh, Searching for and Maintaining Peace, and then um, that I just love, I think is really good. But then also in The School of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. he shares, and it's just one line, and it's become a prayer that I try to pray every morning now, as soon as I have a conscious thought. And he <laughs> says, um, Lord, inspire all of my decisions and never let me neglect any of your inspirations. Oh, isn't that think, beautiful? Never Inspire let me my neglect decisions. any of your inspirations. Wow, that is so beautiful. What's well, the prompting of the Holy Spirit, isn't it, Tony? Right. Well, and you know, when it comes to evangelization, I think evangelization and discernment go hand in hand. So when you're looking for the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you not only have to see with new eyes, but uh, we have a, a radio show that we, that we do every year for the New Year's, which is Happy New Year. We got to listen with a new ear. Oh, we have I to like continue that. to listen Happy and discern. New year. And so that everyone <laughs> we see, we can hear whether the Holy Spirit is asking us to speak or maybe not to speak this time. Mm -hmm. Maybe this time they just, we're just supposed to listen to that person and hear their story. That's what's going to change their heart. You know, we never know. And, and that's the whole point is that the Holy Spirit is in charge. And uh, I think that when we start taking charge is when we, uh, we flounder often. I think that you're absolutely <laughs> right. Well, we're not going to flounder here on our program today. We're going to go to a break right now. And when we come back more with our guest today, we have Tony Brandt with us. We have Chris Stewart with us from Casting Net Ministries, sending you out to their website, castingnetsonline.net. And we want you to take advantage of the good opportunity that these gentlemen can bring to your areas. In addition to all of that, when we come back, I'm going to be giving you some numbers because this is a live simulcast of Women of Grace right here today. And we want to hear from you. We sure do. So those numbers are coming up. You might want to run and get a pencil and a paper so that you can jot them down. We'll be right back. You stay tuned. Welcome back, friends. I have a correction for you. We're visiting with our guest today, Tony Brandt and Chris Stewart, and I'm giving you the wrong website address. That's so terrible. It's castingnetonline.com. 
castingnetonline.com. I was all tied up in nets there for a little bit. Nonetheless, we want to make that correction. That particular website address is coming up underneath the name keys of each of our, our guests today. It's there for you. We want to invite you to get out to EWTNRC.com. This program is available for you there, as are all of the programs in Women of Grace. And while you're out there twinkling those keys on your keyboard, we invite you to stop by our website too, womenofgrace.com. There, we want to invite you to become a member of Women of Grace Exclusive. It's our subscribership program. And a, a, a whole treasure trove of great, valuable resources opens up for you when you become a, a member. All of our programming going back to 1988, all of our radio programming, talks that are there, retreats there, webinars, documents. Oh my gosh, so much is available for you there. Every week we have a patron saint, and this week we have a beautiful patron saint at St. Charles Borromeo. Evangelizing a culture riddled with more decadence and debauchery requires the grace of heroic faith, unflinching tenacity, and a heaping portion of tough love. St. Charles Borromeo had all of these gifts, and for good reason. It was this brave saint who convinced his uncle, Pope Pius IV, to reconvene the Council of Trent and address the corruption running rampant through the church in the 16th century. That takes some guts. Born into a wealthy family in northern Italy in 1538, Charles was trained in civil and canon law and summoned to Rome at a young age to serve as the Vatican Secretary of State. While there, he began to enforce clerical reforms in Rome. He eventually won the coveted See of Milan, the largest archdiocese in Italy, with 3,000 clergy and more than 800,000 people but most of them had drifted away from church teaching. Even though Milan hadn't had a resident bishop in 80 years, Charles immediately began to evangelize by example. He reduced his household staff, sold some of his property to feed the poor, began preaching in churches throughout the diocese, and directly addressed the backsliding of the people. Sunday activities were curtailed, teachers were ordered to profess the faith, and 3,000 new catechists were trained to bring the faith to the people. This made him many enemies and even led to, get this, an attempt on his life by members of an order he was actively trying to reform. As tough an enforcer as he could be, however, his big heart eventually won the love of his people, especially after he braved the devastating plague of 1576 to stay in the city and care for the sick with his own hands. He ordered decorative church draperies and linens to be made into clothing for the destitute and incurred great personal debt while feeding more than 60,000 people during a famine. Worn out by his labor, he died in 1584 at the age of 46. The patron saint of catechists, his feast day is November the 4th. And so it is that we say, St. Charles Borromeo, please do pray for us. Well, he got messy. <laughs> He got into the nitty gritty, yeah, he didn't messy. he? Though yeah. he reminds me a lot of Pope Francis. Yeah. You know, when when you hear that story, right? I mean, because the Holy Father is doing a lot of those same kinds of things. He died at 46. That brings a smile to my face because <laughs> I think to myself, look at what he did in 46 right. young years. Right. You know, I mean, 46 is pretty young. The older you get, the younger it seems. But the fact of the matter is, that's amazing stuff. And he did get down and dirty. Yeah. He got into people's lives. And that's what we've got to do. You do that every day because you also both teach theology to high school students. What are the kids saying to you? What are you hearing? Well, the, the kids are, are really amazing, to be honest. Uh, I think that it's one of the big challenges of, of casting nets is, you know, we can go, like I said, you go out and you train all these people, but we get to actually get down in the in the nitty gritty with with those students and I, the students that are there um, you know some of them are are devout and really getting into their faith and you know you'll have students everywhere from praying the liturgy of the hours every day to kids who are just really falling away and no longer practicing and and for that matter have, have lost all inkling of faith and and so as teachers the real challenge is how do you how do you become all things to all these different types of kids and um, the real key is that relationship, showing them that you actually care about them. Mm -hmm. You know, showing them the love of Jesus Christ in your everyday actions, the way that you treat them before and after school, the way you support them in their athletics, the way that you, you, you go and you just have those conversations and let them know that the door is always open. Um, I, I don't know how many times a semester that I, I just say, look, my office door is always open. Any of you that you have something heavy on your heart, you, wanna, you want somebody to listen and not judge you, 
I just want to listen, yeah. you know, and I'm willing to be an open ear and, and hear your story. That doesn't mean I'm not going to correct you or say something that you may not want to hear, but I'm still going to listen. And you need to know that. And I think the kids respond really well to that. We have, a, we have an incredible group of students at our high school that, um, that pray for us wherever we go in our mission. Isn't that uh, beautiful? We call it the Casting Nets Prayer Crew. Oh, isn't uh, that We beautiful? had a whole bunch of names that we came up with, like uh, Casting Nets Chum Throwers, you know, to get the, the yeah. water stirred yeah. up. I, I he, no, he didn't want that one. I thought that was a great one, you know, but, um, but uh, it ended up being the, the, the crew, the prayer crew that, that you know, that uh, it powers the boat of the fishermen, yeah. you know, and, and um, in the last uh, probably about you know, a little over a year, we've had almost 300,000 memoraries prayed for Casting Nets Ministries. Wow. As, as we go to each parish, we'll present those, those specific prayers that were prayed for that parish or wow. that community. And so, you know, the, the reality is we, we give them these little postcards that basically all they are is a grid of a hundred memorar or a thousand memoraries that they cross off and then they can send it into us. And we have a huge group of students that are totally on board with what we're doing and, and have great idea. actively engaged each other, their own peers, and, and it's it's made a, a huge transformation in the community that, that is there at that school. I can well imagine, and you know, we were talking about this nitty gritty thing, and you're in the nitty gritty with, with the kids today, and I know that so so very frequently the children will go to a teacher before they'll go to a parent. Oh, sure. But you know, home life becomes also uh, this missionary field. And I, I think that sometimes it can be more difficult to evangelize those who are close to you than it can to evangelize those that are out in the world, you know, that, that are acquaintances or even strangers. But uh, sometimes, you know, trying to present the faith to young people who are on the cusp of trying to figure out who they are can be quite, quite challenging. And I get moms that call, and dads too, on our radio program, and they'll say, Johnette, you know, my, my son just said that, that you know, he's, he's considering the gay lifestyle. Or my daughter just said that, that she wants to move in with her boyfriend. And, and you know, my, my teenage son just said he doesn't think he should receive the sacrament of confirmation because none of this means anything to him anyway. What do I do about this? You know, how do we, and I know that, that you talk with catechists all the time who are working with youth at, the, at that age, how do we overcome some of these, these issues and how do we respond to these kinds of nitty-gritty questions? Yeah, you know, John, that's probably the most asked question <laughs> after, after we give a talk. Yeah. I mean, we could almost guarantee uh, someone will come up to us and that's their story, right? And, yeah. But it's not their story, it's all of our stories. Mm -hmm. We all have family member, friends, dear loved ones that have left the church for whatever reason. And uh, so it's all of our stories. And um, you know, I, I, it is difficult for us because that conversation that you have next to someone who's on the plane, that's actually much easier. I mean, because I can say anything and just see if it sticks and, you know, because I'm most likely not going to see this person again. Whereas yeah. with our with our family, um, we're going to have to see them, you know, at the next holiday or um, at the next birthday. And so it is difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the things that we, you know, obviously the first thing we would say is to pray, that intercessory prayer. And I actually, I really loved uh, in your book, Full of Grace, you mentioned the story about Ezekiel and one person standing um, in the breach of the mm -hmm. wall yeah. and how God will stop for that one person. You know, right. can we be that one person that can pray for them so that grace upon grace will be poured upon them? Mm -hmm. But what do we pray? And, um, you know, that because so like when we tell somebody, I really want you to pray for your son, you can kind of see like, well, I'm already doing that. So then we actually give them something very specific to pray. And it was something that Tony, and I'll let him describe it, because he came up with uh, an actual prayer to two saints okay. to pray. Well, and, and what it was, was obviously we all know the story of St. Monica, or I would assume that most people do, yes. the, the mother of St. Augustine that, yes. that prayed for his conversion over and over and over. So I have a, a little prayer that I wrote to St. Monica for her intercession for that person. But then in the story, it's not St. Monica that is the, the, the primary, well, other than her prayer, is not the primary instrument of Augustine's conversion. It was St. Ambrose, who could match the intellect of, of St. Augustine. So I wrote a prayer to St. Ambrose. And the reality is, you know, we all need someone sometimes to step in. If it's not mom to step in, maybe it is that teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the answer to mom's prayer 
is that teacher that's been waiting all these years and has been forming a relationship with that student all these years and they get to be that St. Ambrose in the life of that child. Mm -hmm. So if I'm praying for someone in their conversion, maybe I'm praying for St. Ambrose to send someone into, into the life of my son or daughter or grandchild or whatever um, to be that instrument of, of their conversion because maybe I'm not supposed to answer. But at the end of the prayer, I also say, you know, let me know when I'm supposed to step in and when I'm supposed to step back and let an Ambrose come in and those kind of things. And then we, we also go um, a little bit further than that and we say, let's put our money where our mouth is a little bit. And, um, you know, it's really interesting that we have our prayer crew, that we have the postcards for the individuals to pray for us. Well, we had a, a mom actually ask us down in Florida. She said, well, I like that prayer and I pray it every day, but I need something that I can just send them instead of sending you. And, and I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> keep praying for us. She goes, I will, but I want something to send to them. And so we developed a totally different one specifically to send the loved one. So you pray a thousand memorarias and then you send it to them in the mail. Wow, and when they beautiful. receive a thousand memorarias, or you can buy like a 25 pack and get 25 of your closest friends, the power of prayer is so essential. So I know that the, it's a common question and everyone wants the easy answer. All you gotta do is this, this, this equals conversion. But it all starts with the power of prayer and the grace that is necessary. Because when we're praying, not only do we put ourselves outward in, in listening to what God's message is, but we also have an opportunity to, to hear what the promptings of the Holy Spirit are or allowing other people to be a part of that, that person's life. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we have to recognize that it is free will, but the more people we have working toward that person's conversion and, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the greater chance we have of, of having a, a real conversion or a real opportunity for that. Our guest today on this special Women of Grace live broadcast being brought to you via television and radio and across all kinds of other communication platforms uh, is hosting today our two guests, Chris Stewart and Tony Brandt from Casting Net Ministries. You, you are getting all kinds of good information and I hope that it's sinking in because God wants to use you in amazing and powerful ways. They're gonna be answering your questions in the second half of our program today. So I wanna give you the numbers. Get that pencil and paper here and let's go for them. 800 -2 221-9460. Let me give that to you again. If you're listening to us via radio, you know these numbers are a little different. 800-221-9460. Another number for you, 205-271-2980. You can use that number if you are in the Birmingham area or if you are out of the country, in which case the country code is 1-205-271-2980. Zero. You know, we don't realize how powerful prayer is, and prayer is so, so powerful. And so we think, no, especially in this country, because we're very production oriented. So we got to do something. Yes. But, but the prayer is what you're doing. And it's very efficacious, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, and that's why I think a lot of people love the, the postcard concept. Because yes. it feels like I'm not just praying, I'm actually doing something. We had a close <laughs> friend who actually, um, he's taking this up. He sent one to his, uh, his sister who had gone through a tough divorce. And we all know what divorce can do to someone's faith. Yes. Um, he did a thousand memorarias, sent it to her with a letter. Um, she called, she never calls. She calls crying, mm. saying, no one's ever prayed for me like this. Wow. So it gives us the opportunity to know that we're praying and to allow them to know that they have been prayed for. Yes, you know, and I think that in, in and of itself is, is a huge boost and brings people into a place where they can at least think about what is my relationship with God? Maybe a question that they've never asked before and never would have asked had that postcard not arrived. Friends, Women of Grace, live today on television and on radio, our guests, Tony Brandt and Chris Stewart. We're going to a break, we're gonna be right back. Welcome back, friends. We're visiting with our guest today. We've got Tony Brandt with us and Chris Stewart, and they are the founders of Casting Nets, Ministri Casting Nets Ministries. We want to get you out to their website. I'm going to give you uh, some information on that in just a second, uh, but we do want to mention that this is a live broadcast, and we're with you via television, radio, internet, 
all kinds of different ways. Shortwave radio, satellite radio. Want to give you a couple of numbers so you can join us here. Here we go. 800-221-9460. Again, it's 800-221-9460. Six zero. We also want to give you this number. If you're out of the country or if you're in the Birmingham area, you can call us at country code 1-205-271-2980. Again, it's country code 1-205-271-2980. Now, here's what I really want to share with you uh, about some very, very good stuff. I want to let you know that you can get out to Tony and Chris's website. Again, it's castingnetsonline.com. Casting nets, plural, online.com. And those prayer cards that Tony was talking about for the memorize, available for you there. You can get them singly, but the fact of the matter is you're going to want to get a whole packet of them because I'm sure you want to pray for bunches of people. So there's the packets available for you there, as are these beautiful, beautiful cards that you can use that have prayers to St. Monica and St. Ambrose on them for that loved one that you are seeking for the Lord to bring back into union with him. So we have those available for you out at that website too. And they've got a pack of 50. So why not? I think it's a great idea. You can share them with family and you can share them with friends. That's at castingnetsonline.com. Other thing I want to share with you before we get too far into this program, I want to share with you about these wonderful CD sets that are available for you out there. And these are presentations. You're going to want to hear these. I, I can't wait. They gifted these to me. Aren't they kind? The Honor of Men. I can't wait to hear that one. The World's Strongest Men. Can't wait to listen to that one. Men of the Bible. Can't wait to hear that one. Faith and Light of the Evangelization. Certainly can't wait to hear that one. And I'm just naming a few. All kinds of excellent titles out there. And I know, I know it's going to help you in your walk of faith. So get out there to castingnetsonline.com. Again, those numbers, 800-221-9460. 205-271-2980. Uh, callers are calling in, and we're going to go to those phone lines in just a minute. But, you know, we also talk about these, these nitty-gritty experiences that just pop up with, with these big statements that our children make, but also just in the everyday situations of life where we have an opportunity to speak a word of truth and love. You talked about not wanting to miss an inspiration. You talked, Tony, about recognizing those, those salient moments that God gives to us. You know, we've got to act on those promptings, don't we? Yeah, and I think that we need to prepare ourselves. And I think that that's where the prayer comes in. I know that we keep going back to prayer, but we really have to prepare ourselves. Um, but intellectually, we need to be doing our reading, doing our, you know, read the catechism, read our Bibles, you know, prepare ourselves through uh, whatever resources we can find to have the truth. If we're going to have that conversation, we need to have the truth. So we need to prepare ourselves um, you know, for dialogue, we need to prepare ourselves spiritually, we need to prepare ourselves for those promptings. So when that conversation happens, we, we can know, first of all, whether we should or not say anything. Mm -hmm. But if we should say something, we need to know what we should say. What are some of the simple things that we can be talking about when it comes to um, anything from a moral issue all the way to, you know, I don't believe in God anymore or any of those things. How do we address each person? And we need to be ready and willing to listen so that we know how to address the individual. Because it's not just a canned answer. Right. It's answering a person and their real questions that they have in their real life. Right. And so uh, I think a lot of times they want you to just argue and fight with them mm -hmm. because that's, that's their MO, that's what they, that's what they wanna do. Um, and I think recognizing that and saying, you know what, I'm just gonna be the one that listens for a while. Or I'm, have you thought about this? Or asking them more questions. Um, I found a couple of times, um, examples where I'll have somebody come up and, and man, they're upset about something in the church and they're, and they're going crazy and their son is, is doing this and doing that. And, and the, I could tell that the mom was part of the issue, right? And, and I said, really? Right. The mom? Imagine she, such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and she, but she was having doubts. You could tell the way mm -hmm. that she was asking questions that she was asking doubts. So instead of arguing back at her, which a friend of mine actually did argue back at her and it ended up being a big old fight. And it wasn't Chris. No, it wasn't. No, it no. wasn't Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I simply asked questions. I said, well, why do you think that's, uh, why do you think that's true? You know, and I just kept asking more and more questions. And she actually came back to prove herself wrong and recognized it. She goes, huh. 
Well, that's a really good point. And I was like, I didn't make any points. All I did was <laughs> ask questions. So well, sometimes, sometimes you just have to be ready to ask questions. Sometimes you have to be ready with a with a quick answer. Well, you, you used the Socratic method there. Right, you knew exactly. exactly what you were doing. <laughs> Let's go to Melissa. She's calling us from New York this morning. Hey, Melissa, you are on the air with Johnette and with Tony and with Chris. Hi, Johnette. First of all, I want to thank you so much for your witness and all your resources in helping us to prepare to be better moms and better women. Oh, God bless and, you, sweetie. And uh, better evangelists because of what you do. Oh, well, praise be to God for that, Melissa. Amen. Thank you very, very much. So what do you have for these guys today? Um, I have a question. I am a uh, faith formation teacher. I have children. I'm a mom and a wife. And I also had some questions on, um, I belong to Family Life Ministry. Okay. And I wanted to know, this is the year of the family. What kind of resources are out there to help um, support the family, especially this year, in terms of parenting skills um, throughout the different dioceses, um, because it depends on which diocese you belong to. Um, sometimes I feel on what's available to you, if you will, um, and you know, 21st century issues that are affecting our youth, mm -hmm. addiction, divorce, um, just everything that's affecting the family. How can we better? Uh, how can I? catechize myself better to evangelize and catechize the kids that I teach. What an excellent question. And Melissa, I got to tell you, thank you so much for, for your beautiful heart. You have the heart of a spiritual mother. And uh, you're admitting right there, you don't have all the answers. And you're looking for more answers because you care so deeply. And that, that's just an absolutely beautiful characteristic of your soul. And thank you for that virtue that you're sharing with us today. So where does she go to get these good resources, Chris? Well, to me, and I don't know what Tony would answer this, but I'm going to get outside the box on this question okay. because you could, there's plenty of books and, and tapes and DVD series, and I'm sure EWTN uh, has full of resources. Um, but I'm going to get outside the box here. I think what we need is family to family ministries. Ah, so that's as families, we need to spend time with other families that are active in their faith, so that we can support each other. So that when, you know, after dinner, when the kids go and play and do whatever, we can sit there and talk. And as she was talking, you know, what if someone's dealing with, uh, you know, just a, a kid who's getting lippy, you know, and hey, do you ever have this? And then you can talk about it and you can support each other in, in how you're gonna handle that and know that what I am seeking is what is right, good and true. Um, and so that family to family bonding is, is important to seek those other families out and to spend time with them as a family. Mm -hmm. As couples, yes, but also as a family. Yeah. So even the kids now are witnessing to each other. And then um, in, in that sense too, it's a great way to reach out to other families who perhaps aren't living the faith. Can you invite them over just to spend time as a family? So I really say, you know, we gotta, you know, link arms, if you will. Well, and I'm thinking too, you know, to reach out to those families that are struggling where there is divorce, where, yes. uh, you know, it's a single parent household or where there are other difficulties that are going on there because they they can, your witness in and of itself and your concern and compassion can do so much to bring healing and hope uh, as yes. well as the faith to their experience. Tony? Yeah, I, I think I love what Chris said because uh, it's something that my wife and I have, have dedicated ourselves to a lot within our parish of just developing friendships with other families, inviting whole families over, or getting a, a, a group of, uh, of people together. We have, my wife uh, runs uh, a group called Dinner for Eight, where we just simply uh, have four couples that get together for dinner. You know, once and are a they month. rotating couples? Yep. I and mean, you well, switch them out, or is you, it the same four? You stay four with the same four okay. uh, for just, you know, until everyone is hosted. I and see. then you oh, switch couples. Nice. Oh, isn't that and fun? Then, so you get to know more and more, you know, the, the different people in your parish. Yeah, it I also, think you should do that for widows too. I would like that. Oh yeah. Well, we have it's open for it's open for uh, any yeah, kind of single yeah. adults or yeah. you know single mothers or anything like that, and um, it's really a neat opportunity because you you meet other people in your parish that you don't even know actually support you and and have that same kind of attitude uh, as you do. So I think a lot of times it's it's a matter of meeting other people that can support you 
and finding those groups, whether it's women's groups, men's groups, or family-oriented groups. That and that, that really perfectly illustrates what we were talking about earlier about Pope Paul VI encyclical where he says, do we evangelize like to like? So there's some good ideas for you, Melissa. And, and as far as the resources go, baby, I mean, really and truly, we live in an information age, and so they're all there for you. Get into your catechism. Get into prayer because so much wisdom comes through prayer. I mean, that's really where we interact with God, and he infuses us with the knowledge that we need, and we find ourselves in a situation and suddenly the words are coming out. We have no idea where they came from. That was all forged through, uh, through our Lord's presence in us at that time of prayer. So some good, good uh, advice for you there. Mario from Texas is going to be up with us next. As soon as we come back from our break, we invite you to join us too right here on this Women of Grace live simulcast that is coming to you via all kinds of different media platforms. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back, friends. We're so happy that you're with us for this special live simulcast of Women of Grace. We're coming to you via radio and television and through the internet, too. What a delight it is to have this time to be together. Uh, we are visiting with Tony Brandt and Chris Stewart of Casting Nets Ministries. We want you to get out to their website because they've got all kinds of great resources for you. I've been holding them up and showing them to you. Uh, that is Casting Nets, plural, online, all one word, castingnetsonline.com. Uh, we want you to invite them to your area as well. So if you are a DR if you are a catechist in your parish in charge of spiritual formation for your parish if you're the pastor just invite these gentlemen in and they'll do training days for all of those people that are involved in the various ministries of your church and they're a dynamic duo I want to say that while you're out there on the internet stop by our website womenofgrace.com we'd love for you to become a subscriber to Women of Grace exclusive it is indeed a beautiful opportunity to get all kinds of good resources to help you grow in your life of faith let's go to Mario. He's calling us from Texas. Don't want this good man to hold any longer. Hey, Mario, how are you? Doing it. How are you? I'm I enjoy dandy. your program very much. Thank you. I'm watching live. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for my brothers. Uh, I'm a born-again Christian. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I love Jehovah Jireh. And he's Rafa. He's my provider and my healer and my fortress. How can, my question is, how can you evangelize the world, take the word to the four corners of the world? You need to have Jesus Christ in your heart and the Holy Spirit. How can you preach the cross without the Lord in your heart? That's my question. Thank you. Mario, it's an excellent question. And the answer to that simply is? Well, that is what the new evangelization is about. I think it was interesting when Pope Benedict um, launched the Year of Faith what did it really conclude with mm -hmm. was the synod on the new evangelization. So again, we have this outward, inward moment at the same time that we have got to encounter Jesus Christ, the living God. Um, and when we encounter that living God, uh, when we encounter something so beautiful, so good and so true, we're going to want to naturally share it. <laughs> and the fact is you can't give what you don't have. So if we're trying to evangelize, when we don't have Christ in our hearts, um, it becomes simply trying to sell something, yeah. a product that you really don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, that usually doesn't go well. Mm -hmm. right, I, th I think he makes a, a very good point. You really, you, the answer is you just can't. Right. You can't evangelize without a, a love for Jesus Christ in your heart. And I, I think that even I would go so far as to say the measure of your success will be in direct proportion to the, the depth of love and the, de the depth of the relationship that you have within yourself with, with our Lord Jesus Christ. That depth will be, will be manifest in the fruit that you see within the evangelization efforts. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say this, Mario. You know, there are many misconceptions that seem to proliferate uh, in various different groups of individuals who are Christian. And one of them is that, you know, Catholics don't have a personal relationship with our Lord. And so uh, I know that, that you probably have an opportunity to talk with a lot of people who may have that misconception. Help to correct that, please, because our church is all about personal relationship with our Lord. The Catholic Church is the church that he founded. And so we have this beautiful opportunity to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this life, to spend all eternity with him in heaven through the word that he gave us, but also through his church and through the sacramental structure of that church. You are so right. We have to nurture that personal relationship. Let's go to Sharon. She's calling us from Pennsylvania today. Hey, Sharon, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. What's your question, hon? Okay, my question is, first of all, thank you for having the whole thing there. I'm sorry, I have uh, problems with speech and things like that. Uh, my question is, for someone who is disabled with speech or anything like that, how can we be part of the advan evangelization? I do run into people quite a bit uh, that I don't know or at a doctor, mostly at doctor appointments and things like that. You know, they're uh, fallen away Catholics, mm -hmm. or, you know, it just comes up. I don't know who they are or anything like that. How can I do that without turning people away? What a good question, Sharon, and thank you so very much that you do want to evangelize, and that comes through in your question. So how do we begin that conversation without repelling the people? Right. Well, I think even what she said with, um, you know, if she's disabled or if she doesn't feel like she speaks well, um, I think that's a real challenge, a real scare that a lot of people have. And, you know, to me, we have to realize it's, while elegant words are nice, and while some people may be able to get up and speak to 1,500 people, it's not a gift everybody has, and it's not a gift the Lord needs everybody to have. He needs us to speak simply with our lives, with our witness, with our love. And He needs us to speak clearly and with compassion. Mm -hmm. And so with that, when we do, it's not so much that it's elegant words that are going to convince somebody. Um, it's, it's us living it. So when people want to know, you know, I always think of, um, I always think, you know, what are the best commercials out there? You know, sure, there's billboards, there's TV commercials, but there's those infomercials where they show the product to you. Or if you've ever been to a state fair where, you know, that guy is cutting things with those mm -hmm. fancy knives and he cuts the iron bar and then he slices and people just buy well, those they, they, yeah I, my way. wife never lets me buy them i always want to but like That's people so buy those by the droves why because they saw it with their own eyes right in front of them they saw yeah. it cut the iron bar and then cut the tomatoes wow and they're like they saw it and they want to buy it well the christian life becomes so attractive when they see it lived right there in front of them. Mm -hmm. Not simply in a book, not even portrayed in a movie, but right in front of them. And so if we're living it in that dynamic way, uh, then those opportunities are gonna present themselves. And I wouldn't worry about the frustration of elegant words, uh, but just encourage, encourage her to, to live it in a dynamic way and let the Holy Spirit take care of the words. What a beautiful response. So there you have it, sweetie, and just go about the business of letting the light of the Lord shine through you and letting others hear His voice through your words, no matter how those words might sound to Amen. you. Let's go to Jose. He's calling us from Puerto Rico today. Hello, Jose. How are you? Are you with us there, Jose? Has Jose? What? I don't know what happened to Jose. Let's I wanted go. to talk to Jose because I'd love to go to Puerto Rico. So. <laughs> it's beautiful, <laughs> yeah. isn't it, <laughs> let's, let's talk with Teresa. How about Massachusetts? Would you want to oh, go to yeah. Massachusetts? Hey, Teresa, yeah. how are you? Hi. Hi. What's your question, honey? Well, my question is, I have nine grandchildren, five children. I have nine ch grandchildren, five children. They don't go to Mass anymore. Uh -huh. And when I talk for the... Uh, about God, they just dismiss me. Yeah. So I just like to know what it is that I can do to get to them. Okay, Teresa, your question is on the hearts of so many of our viewers and listeners today. So go for it, guys. What can she do? Well, I think the number one thing that she she needs to be doing, obviously, which I, I would guess she is doing, is to live her faith in a way that shows an example of what 
the faith is supposed to, how it's supposed to be lived, just with total devotion, with joy, with uh, enthusiasm, with zeal. And when that happens, uh, that that's contagious to other people. Mm -hmm. And I know that sometimes it's not words that that cause that conversion. Just continue to pray for them and and continue to look for those moments. But in in general, to pr to live our lives as dynamic as we possibly can. Yeah, I think that that's excellent advice. Thank you, Tony. Teresa, I'm going to add something. You've got nine grandchildren, and so I would call each one of them during the week, and I would say to to each of these grandchildren, depending upon their ages, and and it doesn't really matter if 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 they have close proximity to you. I would call them and say, you know what would make your grandma so happy? Would you help me get to mass on Sunday? How about coming over and accompanying me? I could use some help now. And you know what? Maybe it does put a little guilt on them. I don't know. But some guilt's a very good kind of guilt. <laughs> and you will, in nine weeks' time possibly, have exposed each of those children to Mass. And then I would start the process all over again. Today, many grandparents are catechizing their grandchildren. And I would suggest perhaps that would be one good way to do it. Well, I want to thank you, Chris and Tony, Chris Stewart, Tony Brandt, for being with us today. It's been a marvelous program. We're just scratching the surface. Yes. We know that there's great resources for you there. So get on out there to castingnetsonline.com, castingnetsonline.com. Take advantage of all of the good resources that are available for you there. We're going to leave you now. God bless you.